Hello, this is Tom from AntiProton.com and as you can see I'm kind of flustered. I've been kind of up for a little while <clears throat> watching Japan meltdown. Uh, in fact, it probably is a meltdown at this point. Cesium-137 and I think radioactive iodine got out too. I'm not sure, but I know the cesium did. They have been reported outside of the plant and there's really no reason that that would happen unless the fuel rods were exposed. To give you an idea of what's going on currently at the plant, you basically have a bunch of little tubes, and inside of the tubes you have uranium pellets. Uranium pellets undergo nuclear fission. They've been shut down, meaning that uh, the, the, the control rods have been slapped into place to reduce the actual amount of fusion that's, uh, fusion, fission that's going on inside of them. But the problem is that you, you have radioactive byproducts that come out. The fission uh, chain of uranium is quite long. And those fissile products sometimes, I think they're sometimes called fission fra fragments. I know in nuclear weapons they're called fission fra fragments. I don't know if they're called that in nuclear power plants or not, but those little fragments or pieces, I feel like they're, they're, they're isotopes that are usually, usually highly radioactive. Sometimes they have long-term decay, sometimes short, short decay is usually more energetic. They keep the reactor warm, so to speak. Both radio, both with radioactivity and thermally, and they're hard to cool. And you don't want the water to reduce below the rods. If it does, the rods become exposed, and uranium burns. And then, of course, once it gets super hot, it's also hard to put it back into water again. So it could crack and explode. Now, keep in mind what happened at Chernobyl is probably not likely. That was a slightly different type of reactor. Also, in Chernobyl, everything exploded out. Huge blast. Yes, there has been a blast at the, at the Fukushima plant, but allegedly it was hydrogen. And if you look closely at the way the blast went off, it shot off, and you saw that bright light that, that illuminated the actual pressure as it went through the thermobaric uh, shock wave that it went through. If you saw the light that illuminated it, that was probably caused by something that exploded. There was no orange or red light in it. It was very white looking. So that, that really does kind of jive with the hydrogen that they claimed that went off in, a, in there. Sorry, I'm a little tired of up watching this. <coughs> that being the case, possibly no major amount of radiation was released. But if the cesium is getting out, then that means the rods are probably exposed. And if the rods are probably exposed, even if they've covered them back up with water again, they've probably melted a little, so this is probably at least a, a small partial meltdown. Uh, a good website to go to is, uh, let's see, worldnuclearnews.org, and that's world-nuclear-news.org. Yeah, world they have actual technical explanations if you're curious to know like what's really happening, not just the goofy stuff they see on TV. However, they report that some poor worker that was there received a hundred, what did they say? I have it written down here exactly what they said. Some tremendous dosage of radiation. Uh, 106 milli, milli sieverts. Now, that's an incredible dose of radiation to receive. If that person actually picked up that much radiation, that would equate 106 milli sieverts in one hour is the same as 10,600 millirems in one hour, which is 10.6 rems. That is, I mean, that, that is a significant dosage of radiation for a person to receive. I'm going to go with that person that's going to uh, have vomiting and all kinds of other things that come from it. And, yeah, that's just a tremendous, tremendous dose for a person to receive. Also, the, the, at the hospital that's nearby, people are, are, were randomly selected and tested for radiation, and they were found to have it. What that test positive means is that they're probably exposed to about a, a one rad of radiation. And the reason I say that is because usually you can detect a rad inside of a per well, not a rad inside of a person. You can detect blood changes to the blood as a result of having been exposed to a, a, a one rad of radiation for a given period of time you know, detect the radiation and then it passes through them, generally speaking. Unless it fell upon them, in which case they could have been just detecting the fact that it was on them. Like my Geiger counter, for example, could have picked up some of that sort of stuff if it had fallen upon them. Thank God I live over here, 
not over there, so that most likely none of that will come to us. So hopefully this doesn't hit the Chernobyl level. That would be pretty ter terrible. Hopefully this is more like a Three Mile Island where everybody can sit around and be very upset about it, but nothing major happens. I hope so. I've been saying it since early yesterday morning that this is when it was going to be the big story and this is what was happening. Everybody I work with told me, oh, Tom, this is not the big thing. The reactor's doing just fine. You're just paranoid. Well, you tell me. Does it seem like it's fine to you? There is a second power plant. This is, well, not a power plant, but a second reactor <coughs> that's currently not cooling down the way it should. In fact, let me tell you what the actual status is of all the plants. I have them right here. Currently, currently, Fukushima Unit 1, it says automatically shut down, water level decreasing, pressure release implemented, explosion observed, containment believed intact, seawater ejection has started, radiation levels did not rise after explosion. Unit 2, auto shut down, water level is lower but steady, preparations for, for release. Unit <coughs> 3 is shut down preparations for pressure release as well. Unit uh, 4, 5, and 6 were already off. Now for the Fukushima um, Daini, I'm not so good with Japanese names, sorry. Uh, units 1, 2, 3, and 4 were all on. It looks like all of them shut down. They all have off-site power available. And all the water levels are stable. And they are preparing for a pressure release as well. So reactor units one and two are the problem right this moment. Hopefully it re re really is just going to be one and hopefully they get it under control. They're going to put a um, <clears throat> they're going to pump that thing full of seawater it says down here seawater injection and that's going to be followed by boric acid and that's of course a good idea. You pump boric acid and you'll stop the reaction if it's going on and that, that's good. You want to reduce the, the, the spontaneous fissile uh, uh, effects of the fission fragments and you also want to uh, decrease their um, the amount of, well you can't really decrease the amount of radiation they put off, not really, but you want to impede it as best as you can and what you don't want to also do is you don't want to slow down the neutrons that are coming out either and that's that's kind of a problem, that's an unfortunate side effect of pumping water in is you slow down neutrons and that allows for S, uh, S capture, which allows for reaction to continue and keep going. But at this point, cooling the reactor down is infinitely preferable to worrying about neutron capture. So, basically put, they will decrease the, the temperature and that should be fine. I will keep an eye out for this and keep trying to post links to real information for all of you folks to look at as opposed to the goofy CNN. I mean, it's fine for them and nobody cares or knows anything about radiation. Okay? But I'll post links to where real information is so that you and, and I and people who know what a gray is and, and how much a, a Miller Rankin is actually going to affect you, etc., can look up and see. Because you, you might, those folks might actually want to know what's going on. So let me hurry up and post this. Uh, bye from antiproton.com and the sad nuclear day.